Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or The Notorious Fantasy and in today's video, we're going to be going over your running back start or sit decisions for week number 5 of the 2022 fantasy football season. Inside today's video, I'll be going in depth into every single matchup from Thursday night football all the way until Monday night football and I'll be telling you guys whether I believe you should start or sit the notable running backs in every single matchup. But before we could get into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's Today's video that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and while you're down there whether you are new to the channel or not please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video it would help me out a ton and if you do want to follow me on twitter please do so at notorious fntsy i would also like to ask that if you guys have any questions about week number five so please make sure that you ask down below in the comment section i love to talk to you guys down there so without further ado let's get into my week number five running back start or sit decisions we begin with Thursday Night Football, the Indianapolis Colts at the Denver Broncos. In this game for the Colts, I will be firing up and starting Michael Pittman Jr. Now, ever since week one, things have went a bit downhill for Michael Pittman. Now, obviously, he did get banged up, so that could be why he hasn't been playing the best, but much of the blame could be put on one player, and that is Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan has been an absolute unmitigated fucking disaster through the first couple of games of the season. Now, there have been points where he looks legitimately good, and I think the best for Matt Ryan, the best thing for him, is just feeding the ball to Michael Pittman Jr. The team is more than likely going to be without Jonathan Taylor on Thursday Night Football. I would be perplexed if Jonathan Taylor played this week on Thursday Night Football, so I think we are going to see a healthy dosage of Michael Pittman Jr. in this game. I don't necessarily think that he is going to be a top 10 or even a top 12 wide receiver at the end of the week, but I do think that he is certainly start worthy. For the Denver Broncos, Russell Wilson is banged up right now, but Cortland Sutton does appear to be the number one receiver on this team, but when I say that, it is not meant to demean Jerry Judy, because we've seen through a couple of games this season, even when Sutton's eating, Judy he could still have a solid game. I definitely would rather have Cortland Sutton, and I will have Cortland Sutton ranked much higher later on in the week when we talk about the wide receiver rankings, but Jerry Judy is still a start-worthy wide receiver, and the Denver Broncos, while they haven't been the best, I think they might slaughter the Indianapolis Colts, and we could see a big game out of both of them. Alec Pierce is going to be a sit for me, as well as all the other Indianapolis Colts wide receivers not named Michael Pittman. Now we move to the London game, the New York football Giants at the Green Bay Packers. Now, the Giants wide receivers, we weren't going to fucking start them anyways. Ricky James or Richie James. They have Kadarius Toney, Kenny Galladay. They've got a lot of injuries to their wide receivers. But even if Danny Dimes, Danny Fumbles, Danny Stumbles was the starting quarterback on the team, I wouldn't have wanted to start them anyways. Now, Tyrod Taylor's banged up. So is Danny Dimes. It seems improbable that either are going to play on Sunday morning in London, which means that we might be getting the Jake Fromm experience for the Giants. And I thought it was kind of funny that the Omaha Productions, which is like Peyton Manning's company, they tweeted out that video of, I don't know if you guys saw this, but Eli Manning went to Penn State uh, kind of disguised as a guy. He was Chad Powers and he was throwing the ball and he looked really good. And they were joking that, oh, Eli Manning will come out of retirement for this game. Honestly, that would help out the Giants wide receivers probably, but you're still not going to want to be starting them, especially if Jake Fromm is the starting quarterback. I mean, this situation is just no bra no bueno for the wide receivers in New York, even with the quarterback not being the best. I still think Saquon Barkley will eat in this game, but that's for a different video. So all these Giants wide receivers are going to be sits. For the Packers, they actually have two wide receivers that have been reliable thus far this season. Romeo Dubes, in my opinion, is the more exciting player when compared to Alan Lazard. But the thing is, Alan Lazard is also putting up solid production. Both of these guys are the clear number one and number two wide receivers on this team. Romeo Dubes even fumbled the ball early on in the game, and I started to panic. I was like, fuck Aaron Rodgers is now just going to shun this guy, just like how he shunned his family, and then we're never going to see Romeo Dubes do anything, and then we do see Romeo Dubes kind of have that redemption story later on in the game looks a lot better, so I definitely think Romeo Dubes as well as Alan Lazard are start-worthy in this game, but 
something always just feels bad when you play a game in London. Like, it always feels like this game is just going to suck complete and utter donkey cock. Like, this is going to be an incredibly low-scoring game. But even if it does end up being low-scoring, I still think Dubes and Lazard end up getting it done. These guys aren't upper echelon wide receiver starts, but they're definitely guys I would more than likely not want to leave on my bench, depending on the other wide receivers that you have. Next up, we move to the real Sunday slate at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Buffalo Bills. Now, the Pittsburgh Steelers and Mike Tomlin have announced that Kenny Pickett is going to be the starting quarterback of this game, as well as going forward for this team. And I think it is incredibly funny, the reception that both of these quarterbacks get, right? Mitch Trubisky doesn't have a great game, right? He hasn't been looking that great, but Kenny Pickett comes in and doesn't play the best. Now, no, oh, Nick, he ran in a couple touchdowns. I understand, but he didn't look great in that game. And people are like, oh my God, he's fucking amazing. But he basically passed the ball like Mitch Trubisky and they're just giving him so much applause. Now, I know you always want to cheer for the rookie and I'm cheering for Kenny Pickett, the small hands man himself. And I hope he has a good game, but it's just so funny because Mitch Trubisky wasn't that fucking bad. The king of kissing titties was just all right. Kenny Pickett does basically the same things, makes some crazy throws that aren't necessarily the best, and people praise him. I guess that's just how the NFL works. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, I really do like George Pickens, but not in this game up against the Buffalo Bills. When healthy, the Buffalo Bills defense is one of the best in the league, so I think I want to be fading away from George Pickens, but I want to follow George Pickens a lot in this game because I really do think he might become the number one wide receiver on this team. The other Pittsburgh Steelers wide receivers, Chase Claypool, has been doing his best John Cena impression because you can't see him. They're going to have to put out one of those ads on a fucking milk carton that says missing, and it's going to be a picture of Chase Claypool because we have not seen him do anything this season. Deontay Johnson was productive the first three weeks of the season. Last week, he definitely took a bit of a dive, but I think he could bounce back in this game. He, to me, is still the number one receiver on this team, even though I think Pickens may be able to kind of battle him for that spot. For the Buffalo Bills, you want to be rolling out Stefan Diggs. He's a no-brainer wide receiver start every single week. I don't want to bore you guys by just explaining how good this guy is. Give him the gawk gawk 9,000 because we all know that Stefan Diggs is incredibly talented. For Gabe Davis, he hasn't really been all that good ever since week number one up against the LA Rams, but he has been banged up in all of those games since then. The issue though, this week is the Buffalo Bills. Jamison Crowder's banged up. Isaiah McKenzie is banged up. Doesn't seem like Crowder's going to play. McKenzie might not play. So I think Gabe Davis sees a much stronger role in this game. I'm still going to continue to start him because I think when he is fully healthy, he could easily be a top 12 wide receiver any given week. The Steelers defense without TJ Watt is a fucking disaster. So I definitely want to fire up Gabe Davis and Stefan Diggs in this game. I want to sit down all the other Pittsburgh Steelers wide receivers aside from Deontay Johnson. Next up, we got the LA Superchargers at the Cleveland Browns. Keenan Allen's health is still very much up in the air. I thought since he was pretty close, it seemed like, to playing two weeks ago in week number three, that, oh, he's going to play in week number four, and then in week number four, he doesn't play up against the Texans. So now it's week number five up against the Browns, and I'm starting to worry, like, is this going to be a lengthy absence? Now, you would think it's week three. He would miss, potentially, this would be the third game he would miss. Why would they not put him on IR? if he was going to miss this amount of time. Now, maybe the rehab went wrong. We all know that the Indianapolis Colts doctors, or not the Indianapolis Colts doctors, the LA Chargers doctors aren't the best after they stabbed up Mr. Tyrod Taylor, like his name was OJ Simpson's wife. But at the end of the day here, I do think that Keenan Allen will play. And if he plays, if he suits up, you got to play him. Mike Williams has played pretty good thus far this season. Mike Williams is one of the most confusing players to predict every single week because his ceiling is astronomical. His ceiling is the number one wide receiver on the week where he fucking carries your team to a victory. But the floor is the basement. The floor is a game where he might score four fucking points. So I worry about Mike Williams. Without Keenan Allen, you could feel a lot more comfortable 
with him, but we've seen through the last couple of years, even in games that Keenan Allen doesn't play, there are some games where Mike Williams puts up a complete and utter stinker. I'm going to start him every week, though, because the upside is just too high. Joshua Palmer is going to be a sit for me, assuming Keenan Allen plays, and then Donovan Peoples-Jones for the Browns is going to be a sit. The other Browns wide receiver to note is Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper appears to be the clear number one wide receiver on this team. I'm going to continue to play him as he has looked pretty decent through the first couple of games of the season. And again, I do believe he is the number one target on this team. And going up against the LA Chargers, this isn't going to be an easy fight where they can just run the ball a million times, right? Now they're going to try to because that's their best mode of attack is handing the ball to nine inch Nicholas Chubb 70 times. But up against the Chargers who can put up a crazy point total the Browns are going to have to fight back into this game, thus throwing the ball to Mr. Amari Cooper and David Ninjoku. Next up, we move to the Houston Texans at the Jacksonville Jaguars. And finally, Brandon Cooks has a good game. Huge round of applause for Brandon Cooks, or Brandon Cooks, I just said, Brandon Cooks. Because while I told everyone to draft this man, because he's incredibly safe. He's like wrapping two condoms around your team, incredibly safe. The first couple weeks of the season, this guy wasn't necessarily shitting the bed to where he's scoring like two points but he wasn't doing very good. And last week, he kind of had that quote-unquote breakout game as if Brandon Cooks didn't break out like eight years ago. The guy's been in the league for years, always putting up 1,000-yard seasons. So I think he's back. Davis Mills is obviously a just decent subpar quarterback. He's not the best. Up against the Jaguars defense, that's tough. I still do think that Brandon Cooks gets it done, but he's far from an optimal starter. Now for the Jaguars, last week, I told everyone and their mother to start Christian Kirk and James Robinson. And sadly, both of them hit me harder than Giselle's divorce lawyer is about to hit Tom Brady because they both were asked. Jamal Agnew from the dirt has this crazy ass game. Kirk and James Robinson don't do too good. But again, I'm not overreacting to some shit that happened in week four. This is a game up against the Texans. Trevor Lawrence has looked incredible through the first couple of games of the season. Doug Peterson has really changed things in Jacksonville. So I'm fully confident playing Christian Kirk going forward. I'm not going to let one poor performance worry me and scare me away from Kirk. I'm going to be sitting down Nico Collins. I just don't feel comfortable really starting any of these other Texans aside from Damian Pierce and Brandon Cooks. And for the Jaguars, Zay Jones is returning from injury. If you are in a deeper league and he plays, I think you can start him. But if you're in a normal 12-team league, league with just two receivers and a flex spot more than likely you're not going to need to force Zay Jones into your lineup next up we got the Chicago Chicago Bears at the Minnesota Vikings I saw a video on Twitter I should retweet it after this it was so fucking funny it was Kirk Cousins on I believe the team plane probably back from England and this man has a chain that has this crazy ass circle thing that spins around all diamonds Kirk Cousins is iced up. It was very funny to see. The Chicago Bears offense is inept. Now, Darnell Mooney has seen back-to-back games with over five targets. So maybe Darnell Mooney is going to rise again. He is going to have a great end to the season. Right now, up against the Vikings defense, I don't want to chance it. But it is promising and will be promising if we see Justin Fields throw the ball more to Darnell Mooney every single game. If Matt Eberflus takes his head directly out of his asshole and realizes that, hey, maybe we need to throw the ball, then Darnell Mooney will get a big bump and eventually become a start-worthy wide receiver in fantasy football. Right now, I'd rather leave him on my bench. But hey, things are promising. Equimenius St. Brown, brother of Amon Ra St. Brown, is a sit. Again, the Bears just don't throw the football Enough. Justin Jefferson goes absolutely crazy in London up against the New Orleans Saints, hitting the fucking gritty, scoring a million fantasy football points. Now, week one, he was amazing. Week four, he was amazing. Weeks two and three, not so much. But there's a reason why you drafted this motherfucker inside of the first round. It's because of the immense amount of talent that he has. So I definitely want to be firing up Justin Jefferson, especially since the Bears defense doesn't look all that scary. Adam Thielen is going to be a start for me because his targets have ramped up over the last couple of weeks. Now, Thielen is not a must-start wide receiver. If there are some wide receivers that are listed as a sit in today's video, and you're like, oh, I think I kind of like them a little bit more than Adam Thielen, then I'm not going to blame you, because Adam Thielen is just barely over the kind of cliff to be a start-worthy wide receiver. He just made it in by a little bit. I like Adam Thielen, 
because I like this matchup and I like how he's been targeted more, but I don't feel as though he's a must-start receiver on the week. Next up, we move to the Detroit Lions at the New England Deflatriots. Josh Reynolds has a solid game last week up against the Seattle Seahawks. Jared Goff is looking like the second coming of Tom Brady or something. The guy's looking amazing. And now I'm not saying that Jared Goff is just this franchise quarterback for the Lions. But if the Lions keep putting up this crazy point total and they're going to get Jamison Williams back soon, can you really move on from Jared Goff? Now, I know that might sound crazy, but if Goff's putting up these numbers, like, do you really want to pivot to a quarterback next year that's different? Again, I'm not saying that Jared Goff's going to keep this up and be like a top five quarterback in terms of receiving yards or whatever throughout the whole season. But if he does... And the Lions start winning these games because the Lions are putting up the most points in the NFL right now. I listened to Pardon My Take this morning, a bit of it, uh, the Barstool podcast. I really like that podcast. They talked about how Jared Goff has been a part of three of the top 20 highest scoring games in NFL history, which is just fucking hilarious. Now, again, it's not all just because of Jared Goff, but Goff has been legitimately good. Not here to suck this guy off. But I think he deserves a little bit more credit than most people want to give him. Now, in this game, the only receiver I'm comfortable starting, assuming Amon Ra St. Brown plays, is Amon Ra St. Brown. Now, is the lock that he plays? No. It's not a lock that he plays. Is the lock that DJ Chark plays? No. So if Amon Ra St. Brown, who's an auto start if he plays, does not play, and Chark doesn't play, then I'm rolling out Josh Reynolds again. Now, the Patriots' defense is going to give you much better or much a much tougher game for Jared Goff, I should say, when compared to the Seattle Seahawks defense. So I don't think if Amon Ross St. Brown misses and Chark misses that Josh Reynolds is going to go absolutely fucking crazy again. But I do think he is kind of a flex-worthy guy if that is the case. For the Patriots, I don't think Jacoby Myers is going to be good to go. So they're going to be rolling with Devontae Paca and Nelson Aguilar. Zappi looked pretty good. Uh, Axel Hoyer, Brian Hoyer did not look very good. I don't think Mac Jones is going to return this game. Just this game just stinks to high heaven. Next up, we move to the Seattle Seahawks at the New Orleans Saints and let Geno cook, baby. Geno Smith is cooking up a five star Michelin meal, Gordon Ramsay style. Meanwhile, fucking Russell Wilson in Denver is cooking up some fucking frozen chicken nuggets. All right. Geno Smith. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I shit on this guy all offseason. And look, I'll admit when I'm wrong on something. Through the first four weeks of the season, I've been wrong on Geno Smith. I didn't think Geno Smith was any good. I thought Geno Smith was going to hit DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett with a fucking RKO from out of nowhere like Randy Orton and tank their value. But DK Metcalf, despite the fact that he had to get carted off the field to take a colossal dump, he's, he's doing good. Lockett's doing good. Lockett didn't have all that good of a game, but DK did. Now... I, who do I prefer? Last week, I would have told you Lockett. Now, I think I'd prefer to have Metcalf, but it is still very close. Neither of these guys are just screaming to me that you have to start them, that these are must-start guys, but they're guys you probably want in your lineup in most leagues. Chris Olave, even with Andy Dalton, still has a decent game. I think with famous Jameis Ida W. Winston returns to the team, that Olave has more upside, and I also think Olave benefits heavily from Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas being healthy, and they were obviously not healthy in that London game. Michael Thomas, his health is up in the air right now, but if he plays, you obviously want to roll him out. Assuming Michael Thomas plays, I don't really want anything to do with Jarvis Landry, and I hope and I pray to the fantasy football gods above that Mr. Famous Jameis Winston suits up, because I don't want to see Andy Dalton, the Red Rifle, be the starting quarterback of any team anymore. Next up, we move to my Miami Dolphins at the New football Jets, or the Jumbo Jets, technically, because we got the New York football Giants, the New York Jumbo Jets in MetLife. I really wanted to go to this game. The Dolphins fans have organized a MetLife takeover with over a 1,000 fans going to the game. It would have been an awesome experience, but I ultimately decided not to go. But in this game, I want to be starting Tyreek Hill for the Dolphins. He's must-start. I'm playing him, and even he said... Some uh, analysts, not analysts, what are those guys called? People that ask questions. Off the top of my head, I can't remember because I'm live recording a video, and then when I sit back, I'm editing this later, I'm like, Nick, you fucking dumbass. How do you not know the interviewer, I guess, is what I will call them. 
That's the word we're looking for. And he asks, hey, how do you feel about going from Tua to, to Teddy, basically, is the question. Like, are you still going to be able to put up the same production? And he said, pal, I'd put up the same production with you as my starting quarterback, meaning the interviewer. So Tyreek doesn't give a fuck who the starting quarterback is. Teddy hit Tyreek balls deep down the field up against the Cincinnati Bengals. Tyreek, or not Tyreek, Teddy now has had more time to prepare as the actual starting quarterback of the team. So I think Tyreek still has a great game. I think Tyreek's going to be just fine without Tua. Waddle, though, I do worry a little bit more without Tua. How is he going to perform in this game? Now, I don't think that he's going to shit the bed, but I just don't feel as confident as I do when we compare Waddle to Hill when we have Teddy in instead of Tua. Trying to determine when Tua's going to come back at this point seems basically impossible. There's people that'll say he's going to miss the Jets, and then he's going to be back next week. There's people that are saying this man might not play all season. There's people that are saying it's going to be after the bye week. I don't fucking know. I'm not a doctor. I'm as much of a doctor as Johnny Sins. I know I say that joke all the time. I think it's kind of funny. So yeah, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know. But what I do know is that Teddy Two Gloves will be under center in this game at the helm. I love Tyreek in this game. Jalen Waddle is just fine, but I am still starting him over a lot of players that are listed as a start. For these sets, we're going to go ahead and go with Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, and Corey Davis. Now, Garrett Wilson still looked good because he was getting targeted by Mr. The Milf Hunter, Zach Wilson, but he's not in the same spot he was with cool Joe Flacco. I just don't feel comfortable playing Garrett Wilson or Elijah Moore. Honestly, if I was, if I had to play one of these wide receivers, while I think this guy is the least talented out of the grouping of three here, I think I would rather play Corey Davis because Zach Wilson just loves throwing the fucking ball to him. He force-fed him the ball up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So if I have to start one, honestly, it might sound crazy, I would probably start Corey Davis. And that sucks because you probably paid a lot of fab, used a high waiver priority to get Garrett Wilson. He looked so good with Joe Joe Flacco. Do I think that Zach Wilson just shot this guy in the back of the head and that Garrett Wilson will never have value? No, but right now I do think Corey Davis is genuinely the best start out of the three. Next up, we move to the Atlanta Falcons at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And in this game, I'm going to go ahead and roll out Drake London up against the Buccaneers. Now, The Buccaneers' defense does look legit. I understand they just got the ever-living shit beat out of them by the Kansas City Chiefs, but the Kansas City Chiefs might be the best offense in the NFL. Shocker, I know a lot of people before the season. But, but Nick, um, Patrick Mahomes doesn't have Tyreek anymore. Um, oh man, the the Chiefs are going to be really bad. Uh, Mahomes going to be bad. Yeah. That's, what, that's what's going to happen, right? The the best quarterback or one of the best in the NFL is just going to suck ass because he lost Tyreek. Makes sense, right? Obviously, that's not what happened. The Chiefs offense is amazing. Buccaneers defense, sure, they had a bad game, but it was up against the Chiefs. So I'm not, not like trying to throw everything out because, like, say the Bucs defense sucks ass because of the Chiefs game. I'm just not going to say that. Drake London did not do good at all last week up against the Browns. Uh, they're going to have to throw more against the Bucks. So I think Drake London gets it done, but he's definitely not a guy I'm banging the drum for to be a top 12, top 18-ish receiver on the week. Mike Evans is must start every single week. We saw up against the Chiefs why I told everyone to draft Mike Evans, and it's because this guy is a touch down machine. He gets more tugs than I'm sure Deshaun Watson gets right now. So I love Mike Evans. I talked about so much in the offseason, and I genuinely think that he is in a big game this week up against the Atlanta Falcons. Plus, like I talked about earlier, Giselle and Tom, they're getting divorced. I thought that was a little Fugazi, Fugazi. It's a wazzy, it's a woozy, but it turns out that it's the truth. And Tom. Oh, man, I pray for the Falcons' defense. Tom is about a feast like it's Thanksgiving dinner. Chris Godwin returns from injury, gets hurt in the game. What are the Buccaneers doing? Why are they rolling this guy out? 
but he's so fucking good that I'm going to start him. When Godwin is healthy, this guy could be a top five receiver. Both Evans and Godwin could easily finish inside of the top 12 when they're both healthy. So I'm definitely rolling out Chris Godwin up against the Falcons. We have a double revenge game here. Russell Gage and Julio Jones up against the Atlanta Falcons. It would be awesome if they both scored, but realistically, Gage did kind of look like dust up against the Chiefs, and Julio, who knows how healthy he is. Um, I don't really want to be starting either of them, even though it would be awesome for my favorite. I love the revenge game narrative. It would be so awesome if both of them scored. And then Olamide, Zacchaeus, and all of these other Falcons wide receivers are definitely sits for me, aside from Drake London. And not to give a spoiler, but this tight end video, we are going to have... Maybe the greatest rant ever tomorrow. I haven't even recorded it yet. I just know I'm going to get angry when I talk about Kyle Pitts. Next game, we got the Le Titans at the Washington Commanders. But before we break this game down, I would like to give you guys a quick word from our friends and our sponsor of today's video over at Underdog Fantasy. They're on your screen right now. They've been on your screen the whole entire time video. Now, Underdog Fantasy is a best ball website, and they offer the best best ball tournament right now, the week six through week 17 best ball resurrection tournament. Only $10 to enter with 100,000 smackaroos to first place, 100k to first, $500,000 in total prizes. The thing that makes best ball so in interesting, in my opinion, is because you don't have to worry about setting your lineup. There's no waivers. There's no trades. You just draft your team, and that's it. And then you could come back at the end of the season and have a boatload of cash. You don't have to worry about accidentally starting the wrong receiver, accidentally starting the wrong quarterback, and losing to some fucking accountant in your league. And you also don't have to worry about doing trades, waivers, any of that stuff. It's very, very fun, in my opinion. I plan on doing a bunch of these drafts before it locks on Thursday for week number six. Not this Thursday. But next Thursday, again, only $10 to enter, 100 k to first place, 500000 in total prizes. If you want to check that out and you're new to Underdog, use promo code STOCASTIC, S-T-O-K-A-S-T-I-C. Also, in the pinned comment, in the video description, you click that link, they'll give you a $100 first match deposit bonus. So if you deposit $100, they will give you $100 free, dollars, which is 10 free entries into the Best Ball Resurrection Tournament. Maybe you don't want to play in the Resurrection Tournament. Then they also have Pick'em Games on there. They also have Sunday night football, Monday night football, Thursday night football drafts, and Sunday slate drafts. So there's a lot of stuff you can do over on Underdog Fantasy. Make sure you guys do check that out. It would help me out a ton. And it's also very fun. Like, I'm not just going to advertise something that I don't think is fun. I did a bunch of drafts in the offseason, and I try to do a bunch of drafts every week. And this week coming up, I'm going to try to jam a bunch in before it locks for the week six resurrection tournament, week six through 17. So back on into things here, we got the Le Titans at the Washington Commanders. And in this one, I want to be rolling out both Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel. Now, both of these guys have fallen off a peg like how Humpty Dumpty has fallen off the wall. Both of these guys are not ideal starts. I'm not banging the drum aggressively saying, hey, you have to start McLaurin and you have to start Samuel. But in this game up against the Titans, I think that we could see Wentz play a little bit better. Now, I do like the Titans' defense for fantasy because Wentz is just prone to turning the ball over, but the Commanders could still have a good game. Wentz could turn the ball over once or twice, and we could still see McLaurin and Samuel have a decent game. Uh, McLaurin and Samuel have been pretty decent all season, and it would really have to take Wentz being absolute dog shit. Like, if he puts up another awful performance here, then I'm going to get legitimately scared. But right now, I think I'm just fine with McLaurin and Samuel for the sits of the Titans. Traylon Burks gets hurt. So sad. There's a big Burks guy in the offseason. He gets hurt. Uh, sucks. Uh, Robert Woods now would be the receiver one on the team. Even against the commander's defense, I don't really want to do that. Nick westbrook Ikain should be the wide receiver too. Again, don't really want to do that. It's not like Tannehill is going to have to throw a bunch in this game. Next up, we move to the San Francisco 49ers at the Carolina Panthers. And last week, I basically dragged Debo Samuel's name through the mud. I was talking about how Debo Samuel has been super unimpressive. Like you draft him in the second round and he's putting up like 12 points. That's just not good at all. And then after that, on Monday Night Football, the guy basically puts up the best touchdown score of the season. That just has to be. That was amazing. Beautiful. My cock was erect the second I saw him just juke all those guys. It was crazy. It was crazy. Um, Debo Samuel should be in for a great spot against the Carolina Panthers. Obviously, you were starting every, him every week anyways, 
but I was starting to get a little bit worried. Brandon Ayuk, he'll have some decent games. He'll have some bad games. Against the Panthers, maybe you want to start him, but again, he's not not like on my radar to be starting. DJ Moore has sadly been put in the casket by Baker Mayfield, and every week, one by one, he's just hitting the nails in. It sucks. It sucks. Uh, Sam Darnold might return soon, but I don't think Sam Darnold's better than Baker, so I don't even think that really helps out DJ Moore. Uh, it sucks. I-, I get why you might want to start DJ Moore in some matchups, but this week up against the 49ers defense that just locked up Matthew Stafford and threw away the fucking key. There's no way you want to be playing DJ Moore. Robbie Anderson is a sit for me as well. The Philadelphia Eagles up against the Arizona Cardinals in Arizona. All right. So let's just have a quick discussion real quick. Just sit down, grab some popcorn, because we got to talk real quick about the Cardinals. Look, they pulled out the win against the Panthers. Congratulations. But 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 what's happening in Arizona? Like like that meme with that, nah, I don't want to, that fat guy on ESPN, you know what I'm talking about, where he's like, what's happening in Utah? You know what I'm talking about, the meme where he's like this? What's happening in Arizona, Cliff Kingsbury? What's happening? Tyler Murray's fucking chewing you out. During the game, um, you're barely beating the Panthers. I know at the end of the game, oh, Nick, look at the look at the box score. The box score doesn't tell you everything about the game. It doesn't. The Cardinals, who normally start the season on fire, the Cardinals who normally look unbeatable in the first couple weeks of the season, look like the Panthers could have fucking beaten them if Baker Mayfield wasn't such an awful fucking quarterback. It's bad. Now, Hollywood Brown's still good for fantasy. He's great for fantasy because he went from being that deep down the field burner. I talked about this a lot last week. It's like, oh, they bring him in to be this deep down the field threat, but they're just throwing him fucking the ball a million times like he's Michael Thomas in a Drew Brees system. It's fine for fantasy. It's great. But like, what's happening in Arizona? Why can they not figure out how to just start strong? It's like every game they win is because they make this comeback in the second half. They don't do anything in the first half. Their team is limp dick. And then towards the end of the game, they get fully erect. It's like the exact opposite of the Baltimore Ravens. The Baltimore Ravens start the game off looking like they are the best offense in National Football League history. And then the second the game hits halftime, they can't get it up. They're just limp dick. They need Viagra. It is just crazy crazy how this Arizona Cardinals team is. Now, I'm not here to rant for fucking five hours on the Cardinals, but just some food for thought. What the fuck is going on in Arizona? Is Cliff Kingsbury going to get fired? I don't think they'll do it, but he he should be on the hot seat for what's going on early on in the season. Uh, AJ Brown for the Eagles, obviously a start, must start him every single week. No, there's no if ands, or buts about it. He's one of the best receivers in the NFL. This matchup has all the makings to potentially be a high-scoring tit-for-tat, back-and-forth affair. I want everything to do with A.J. Brown. Devonta Smith is going to be a start for me up against the Arizona Cardinals. He had a down week last week in that game up against the Jaguars. But again, not moving the needle too much, not moving the pendulum to make him a sit. I like him here. Again, this should be a higher-scoring game. Hollywood Brown, again, another must-start wide receiver. You don't want to overthink that. Greg Dortch, the Dortch one, had a shit game last week. He's never really been listed as a start. I told a lot of people to start him last week. Things didn't work out. I think he could bounce back this week, but not a guy that you really want to force into your lineup. Next up, we got the Dallas Cowboys at the LA Rams. Dak Prescott was rumored to potentially come back this week, but Jerry Jones kind of uh, silenced that this morning as he said that Dak would be out for another game. Dak was allegedly gripping the football fine, but then they're like, "Uh, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't risk this. Makes sense. Don't risk the franchise quarterback when Cooper Rush has been playing so well. Uh, don't chance things. Don't let Dak get fucking eaten alive by that huge man, Aaron Donald. Just don't do that. It, w- it would make no sense to do that. So they're going to roll out Cooper Rush, who is undefeated as the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. The starting quarterback, that is obviously he technically lost against the Bucks, but that wasn't his fault. C.D. Lamb up against the Rams. You want to start him. Uh, the Rams defense uh, is good. But they're not as good as they used to be because we've seen what's happened. The Rams, no bueno. Uh, Cooper Cup, you're going to want to start him. Obviously, you start him every week, even in the games where the Rams are getting bulldozed by these teams. Cooper Cup still puts up a great uh, great performance. Allen Robinson, fire this guy into the sun. Take him, uh, put him in a cannon, medieval style, and fire that shit into the sun. Allen Robinson, I'm fucking done with you. 
I am done with you. Now, I've made all these excuses for Allen Robinson. I was a big Allen Robinson truther. I was like, oh, the Bears fucked him last year. Oh, now he's got Stafford. And in training camp, you're seeing all these reports. Stafford and Robinson, they're looking amazing. Then the bright lights turn on and Allen Robinson shits his pants. Shits his pants. Maybe things turn on eventually, but Robinson's getting targets in the red zone. He's not scoring. What do you want to do with Allen Robinson? You're not starting him. I guess you hold him on your bench one more week, maybe give it uh, one more chance, you know, one last chance to try to save the marriage. But at the end of the day, we all know how things are going to go, and it's going to end in divorce for Allen Robinson. Michael Gallup is a guy that I'm happy to add. Happy to sit him on the bench this week, though. Uh, Once Dak returns, I'm more excited about him. With Cooper Rush, he's fine, but uh, not against the Rams. Bengals at the Baltimore Ravens. Jamar Chase, as well as Mr. Titty Boy, T. Higgins, are going to be starts this week. They are starts every single week. T. Higgins exploded last week up against the Miami Dolphins. Jamar Chase has a decent game, but Jamar Chase is normally not a guy that strings together a million hot games in a row. He's kind of up and down. Um, but at the end of the day, you're still going to want to start him every single week because even his bad games, he's not really going to sell your team up the river. Tee-hee. Higgins, Teddy Boy T. Higgins, obviously, is a start every week as well. Don't really want to have to spend too much time on guys you knew you were going to start already. Rashad Master Bateman did get banged up at the end of that game. He was in a walking boot after the game up against the Buffalo Bills. That doesn't mean uh, necessarily that he's going to miss this game. But uh, makes me not want to start him. Devin DuVernay would then be the number one receiver on the team. But in reality, it's Mark Andrews, so I don't want to start him. Tyler, yeah, Boyd is an excellent start in games where Jamar Chase or T. Higgins wouldn't play. They're both going to play, so Boyd is left best on the bench. Next up, we move to the Las Vegas Raiders at the Kansas City Chiefs on Monday Night Football. Sunday night football between the Ravens and the Bengals will be a nice Sunday night football game. But here, you only want to be firing up Devontae Adams of the Raiders. Back-to-back weeks of the Chiefs on prime time. Back-to-back weeks of the Chiefs on Monday night football. Is that allowed? Or was that, that was Sunday night football, right? Fuck, what day is today? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I just had a colossal brain fart. That was Sunday Night Football. We're now on Monday Night Football. So last week they played Sunday Night Football. I'm such a fucking idiot. Yesterday was the Rams versus the 49ers. I just had a brain fart. I'm not going to edit that out. I don't edit out too much. Like, I sneeze sometimes or have to fucking cough because I talk for 35, 40 minutes straight. That's what I edit out. Normally if I say something, like, stupid, I just keep it in. It is what it is, right? Raiders at Chiefs. Back-to-back primetime games for the Chiefs, though. I'm going to fire up Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams has been reliable every single game, even with the team not being the hottest. I'm going to play Devontae Adams here regardless of what happens, so I'm playing him. Uh, Hunter Renfro may, may not play. I don't really want to start him against the Chiefs. The Chiefs defense looked really good last week. Matt Collins don't really want to be starting him. Uh, the Chiefs receivers, we got Mr. Corvette, Corvette, Juju Smith-Schuster. They've got me, Cole Hardman. They've got MVS. Uh, they all have upside in any given week. They all have, in DFS, like if this is a Sunday game, they all have slate-breaking upside where they just go fucking bananas. They have a huge game. But in redraft fantasy football, do I really want to be rolling out someone who I'm not the most sure on and where they have a million different options who could have big games Probably not, right? So Juju and MVS are best left on your bench. The only guy I want to play at the wide receiver position in this game is going to be Mr. Devontae Adams. Thank you guys all so much for watching today's video. If you didn't end up enjoying, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below as well as hitting that like button. It would help me out a ton. And if you do want to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. I would also like to ask that if you have any questions about week number five, already week five, that's crazy, of the 2022 fantasy football season, make sure you ask down below in the comment section. I love you guys all so much. Let's hit that outro. And as always, have a great rest of your guys' day. Good boy!